after, after you have suffered a little while. After you have suffered a little while is the first step. Will himself restore you. Will himself restore you. What version are you reading? And make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Okay, strong, firm, and steadfast. That's okay. Yeah, okay. do international version. Does anyone have a new, new King James? Okay, well, that's okay. We're going to hold yours, hold yours. That's all right, that's good. But my sermon preaches from the North, the New King James. So I need the word perfect in there. Is yours perfect? <laughs> May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. After you have suffered a while, step one. We've all suffered in here, huh? Or we would be in this room. God makes us suffer to be in this room. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, it's life. Go ahead. That's the first step. Number two. Perfect. Perfect you. Perfect you is step number two. How do you perfect? Nobody's perfect, Lord. That's what I'm going to speak on today. Number three. Establish. Establish you is the next step. We think in the Western culture, oh, it's just going to establish me. I know what establish means. No. Study. To show yourself approved unto God, not what the Webster's Dictionary says. For a work that needs not to be ashamed because we rightly divided and study the word of truth and know what the word establishment means and what's the fourth step? Strengthen. Strengthen. How do you strengthen and why would you strengthen? Per God's. And what's the last step? And settle you. And settle you. Ooh. Okay, let's back up here now. Let's back here. Let's just tell some good stories. We don't even have to read them, we'll know them. Joseph, in the Bible, was turned away by his own family, his brothers, right? He then even turned away the lady that wanted to have relations with him. And he had to suffer a while. He had to spend two years in prison for doing right. But, ladies, ladies, the last time he walked out of those prison doors, he never had a bad day in his life. His destiny settled. He became the second, write it down, he became the second most powerful person on the face of the earth at that time. Had every bit of wealth he wanted, every bit of favor. He even got his family back, he got his dad back, he had a beautiful wife and two children, and never had a bad day again in his life. Destiny settled. Why? Because he walked through these five steps. He walked through them. The very first sentence says, and the grace, it only takes grace to get our settlement. Amen. We have a part to play. The first, the first is after you have suffered a while. If you haven't suffered, I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> because there's no humility. Amen. Arrogance right. comes with, I have it all. Amen. Suffering says, help me, Lord! Yes. Yes. I'll call up to you. And you will answer me. Amen. Ruth and Naomi. Ruth lost it all. Lost a husband. Who's lost a husband in here? I have. You have, you have, you have, you have, you have, you have. Okay. You have too. We know what it's like. Yes. To go, oh no. I'm yes. on my own. Ow. Okay. And you just can't run out and marry anybody because they could be the worst that's nightmare right. in the world. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You get it. So that's, Ruth went through this, and now Ruth looked at her mother-in-law, and her mother-in-law said, don't look at me. I have two sons that died. I'm grieving. I love my sons. My own husband died. Please go away from me. And she wanted to change her name because she felt so bad. And that young Ruth said, oh, no, I'm sticking by you, you little depressed little woman, because I know someday you're not going to be depressed. Your people are my people. Your God is my God. Where you go, I go. Where you die, I... And the, finally, Naomi just, whatever, let's go. So they left, and they went over to Bethlehem. And when they got there, did Ruth know that she was bleeding in her future husband's field? That little girl was such a workaholic. The, the, the mom had to tell her to take a shower and put on a dress. She said, go clean yourself up. You smell. <laughs> that is a good girl. Not saying, now I want him to take care of me for all my days. Mm -mm. Life's a mutual. You gotta take care of him too. She was out there getting her. I call it God's welfare system back then because she got free food, all the grain. Did she save it for herself? No. She took it home to this little woman here. You, you. She always saw someone for herself. She lost everything. She lost her friends. 
She lost her family. She lost everything she had back in Moab. And because she suffered a while, God gave her everything and her destiny settled. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, I love those stories. After Daniel came out of the lion's den, he never had a bad day again in his life. The king said, everybody's going to serve this man, God. And he exalted him, and his enemies were destroyed. Amen. Because it happened to Daniel, it can happen to you. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who's ever been through a fiery furnace? I mean, not a literary fiery furnace, but the people talking about you? Ooh. Uh, how about a job just fired you for no reason, or people on the job just hate you, jealous of you? You know it's not them, it's the demons that can't stand the light in you. Thank you. You are the light in the dark place, expect it. Because when you walk in the room, their sins are exposed. <laughs> and they're like, oh, she knows me. And they know the spirit inside. This lady knows me. She can she can read my mind. I can tell her looking at her eyes, and she knows that I'm telling her a lie. That's what they'll say. They know, because the demons know your light will expose their darkness. So just expect it, smile, and think. James chapter 1, verse 2. Who's got James? Chapter 1, verse 2. Look at James if I can, please. You got it again? Okay. It's 1, verse 2. My brother... Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith products produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. There's that word perfect again. If you go back to chapter 1, Peter, verse 5, verse 10, the second step to get your settlement is perfection. So when, when she walks into the room and her co-workers say, oh, Let's put something on our computer. Let's stick it. I know I've lived in that white collar and the blue collar to where it's all competitive. And that's where you put the Holy Spirit on every day. I melt my head with oil. You just let me go do my job. And I focus. I don't focus on the people around. I focus on the boss. Because he's my paycheck. So you don't try me, 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 me. Oh, no, this gossip and busybody. Focus on the boss. And when the boss respects you and likes you, other people will too. And that's when you could be a light and say, oh, sure, we can go out to dinner. And then talk about Jesus. Don't talk about this or talk about that. Talk about Jesus. Because if you talk about other things, they'll say you said something that you didn't. You understand? Okay, thank you. So talk about Jesus. Anyway, let's get back to 1 Peter chapter 5. The second step is perfection. How, oh, 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 when, when, the, when, the, when the co-workers want to come at you, you just remember James chapter 1, verse 2, that says, wait, I'm supposed to count it all joy when Amen. they stab me. Amen. It hurts. So how do you count it all joy? Because you know, on judgment day, when Jesus is handing out rewards for everyone that was hurt, you're going to see this person over there sitting with all these rewards. And they're, you're going to say, man, I wish I, you're almost going to wish that you were persecuted even more. <laughs> I know I had a few more things happen to me. I, I, yeah, remember that? And Jesus is going to smile and say, I can tell you even more. Because I see from the eagle's point of view. You only know what you know, but I know what you said over here and there. there. All these places. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So don't worry. Count it all joy. Because yeah. you know they persecuted Jesus. That means I'm in his tribe. I'm in his group. Because they're persecuting me too. So Lord, I thank you. Going back to Peter, 1 Peter 5, verse 10. Perfect, and this is where I close. Will they perfect you? How do I, how do I become perfect, Lord? Nobody's perfect. It's so simple. He says this. If David, King David, can commit adultery, you can almost say fornication, murder, and still have a heart after God, all because he did this, ladies. Oh my God, what did I do? Father, I promise I'll never do it again. Lord, please, I'll never. I promise, I promise. Oh my heart, how beautiful that she is. I'll never do it again. Are you sure, David? Yes. Are you sure, David? Yes, Lord. And God knew. He's not mine. 
His heart is true. Ladies, not everybody on this earth is perfect. But God considers us perfect. And we say, God, please forgive me. I'll never say something like that again. Have you ever, in the old, in the old lives, in our old lives, before we had the Holy Spirit, anybody can be saved, but unless you have the Holy Spirit, you're still going to act the same way because your flesh doesn't get saved. Your mind doesn't get saved until you renew it. You can only renew it with the Holy Spirit. It's like the gas in the car. So many Christians just have a car, and they're trying to put around with no power. The Holy Spirit power. Holy Spirit, more of me. Take more of me, and I want more of you. So when you say, Lord, forgive me, you, you're going to say something snappy to somebody, and you, you hold your tongue. You go to swing, and you only swing halfway. Okay. <laughs> you think about it. You hold back, say, wait, self-control. I, I have the gifts of the Holy Spirit in me, I'm sorry. The old me would have done that, but today I'm different. I need my settlement. And if I want my settlement, it's not up to God. It's up to me. I can't keep blaming God or blaming this or blaming that person or this or that. I will get it myself. If Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Ruth, Naomi, Joseph, and so many others got their assignments, so can I. Perfection simply means forgiveness. It also means deliverance. There isn't a single person that was born on this earth that was not born in sin. Let's just put it in a terminology here. Let's just say we were born in a pool of mud. And we walk around until we become old enough to know what sin really is. To say, boy, I, I think I need to take a shower. I think I need to get this mud off of me. And that mud is when you get the demons off your back. Has anyone had a setback or a limitation or nightmares or things that stop you? You start a business and for whatever reason it goes down. You get all this stuff and it's pulled right out from underneath you, a setback. That's not you. It's the mud that you were born with that you still have to get rid of. It's in the Word of God. Deliverance. Every single one of us on this earth needs deliverance. And the setbacks will stop. The limitations will stop. The nightmares will stop. The family horror will stop when we clean ourselves up. Pick the, the plank out of our own eye before we pick the speck out of someone else's. Amen? So if I can help you ladies today, get your settlement by going through the perfection state. We've already suffered. We know what suffering is, or we wouldn't be in this pew this morning. Suffering, I, you know, it says in there, once you've suffered a while, when I first went through my very first nightmare, I cried to God, how long is a while? How, just tell me how long so I know. During the test, the teacher always stays quiet. He wouldn't answer me. And it wasn't until I changed the way I spoke. Instead of crying my problem, Lord, this happened, Lord, this happened, I would say, in the name of Lord Jesus, I'm sick of this, Satan. You get out of my business. You get out of my life. I belong to Jesus Christ. And I don't know that, I don't know if you remember Satan, but I have the sharpest sword in the world. You come close to me, I'll stab you. With the word of God, no weapon for it against me shall prosper. And any tongue, I'm sorry, any tongue, any tongue from the president to the janitor, any tongue that rises up against you, that pick up your sword in judgment, has already been condemned and proven to be in the wrong, for this is your heritage as a child of the king. So ladies, I encourage you to walk through, I know I don't have time to go into the the steps of, of getting yourself in the series is back there. The establishment, how God wants you to establish, how he wants you uh, um, um, strengthen. Strengthen is always against the enemy. Let's just say you go out and start your, your government job and your friends hear about it. Oh, man. Ah, and she's meeting with who? Ah. No Facebook stuff. Because then witches will get up at midnight and start praying against you. So, do you meet with who? Oh, you talk about the jealousy start and the competition start. Take a look at the story that we talked about in the beginning, Nehemiah. You remember what he did? When he went there, he lay quiet. 
Stayed in the Motel 6. Got quiet. And when they heard about him, oh, they ganged up on him. So bad. The Bible said he went through so much opposition. And he said to the women, you're the security guards. I want you to stand out there. Your kids are going to be outside the building, and you're going to stand there with the sword. And if they come at you, you scream at them all. Cut you. Husbands, you have a sword in one hand, and you have a stone to build a wall in the other. If you have to have the hand of a lamb and the hand of a lion, so be it. So always be prepared when you step into your blessing. Envy always follows you. Jealousy always follows you. And that's what strengthening is. God has his way of strengthening you. And that's what one Peter. I want you to get standing up saying, I don't care about that. I have this one under control, that one under control. And, and don't say, oh, we'll just leave it to God. Yes. But you have to do your part first. You never leave an open door for the devil. That's what strengthening is. It's not stupidity. You don't stay in a, in a bad neighborhood and leave your car unlocked, your house unlocked. You have to do your part and then say, okay, now God will take care of it. I do my part. You understand? Strengthening is strengthening you after jealousy, after competition, after all that stuff. And then you step into your destiny. Where Ruth and Naomi, her Boaz, anybody need a Boaz in this room? Your Boaz would come. Amen. Okay? Several of you. Good. Why not? Ask for anything you want and say, Lord, here's my to do list for you. I will to do for you if you to do for me. Please. I'm going to hold you to your word in 1 Peter 5, 10, James 1, 2 through 5, Mark chapter 10, 29 through 30. You set up, get it all back. Amen. I don't want to die without my settlement. I'm willing to humble myself and go through the perfection stage where I repent of everything I've ever said wrong or done to anyone. Shed that stuff. I'm willing to go through deliverance. Now, we women, I can talk because I had it. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to shed a little opening here, which I usually don't share on camera. By the way, is that camera one back there, girl? Yeah. Good. I, I, I usually don't share this, but I will because you're so like a special day. Years ago, before my husband passed away, you know what? God bless him. He wasn't the best husband at all. But God bless him. When I look back, I'm like, boy, and I wasn't the best wife either. I feel sorry for him almost. <laughs> he beat me, he slept around on me, all that stuff. I'm like, you know what, Lord? I know now it was not him. Those demons hated me. And they used him to get to me. He's fine. The demons are the cause. And I'm like, ooh, man. I can't stand being job. I love to live in If there's anything I love to do, it's cast demons out of people's lives so their money comes back, their husband comes back, their children come back, their finances come back, their house comes back. Enough is enough. The devil is a liar. Where's the action in the church? Let's get the power of the Holy Spirit to turn on that light and the demons flee. Amen? Amen? You can do it yourself. I'm going to tell you how. It's self deliverance. You will never. You will never hear, and I'll give your Bible back in a minute. <laughs> you will never hear, uh, how do you say this? Many times through our exorcisms, I'll call it that way, but just deliverances. You will hear the demon use the man's voice or the woman's voice, and it will sound just like the woman. We have to have discernment to know whether it's a demon. You see, that's why Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind me. Because he knew that's not Peter talking. Get thee behind me. It wasn't Peter, it was the demon that was on his back right here trying to tell him what to say. His favorite disciple. You'll never hear a possessed person being used by the devil say, all she does is read her Bible. I can't stand it. You will hear them say, all she does is worship. All she does is sing. All she does is go help the poor. All she does is I never, ever, ever heard a demon say, all she does is read the Bible. I'm telling you, you, you open up that book, the author is present. And when the author is present, the demon has to be. Yeah. Amen, amen. So please, ladies, 
it's wonderful to be assembled and go to church and do things like this and read the Bible. But when you go home, before you go to bed, spend five minutes alone with the Lord. Lord, this is your time where I'm going to open up the Word. Tell me where I can go. And the last thing you think about is what you just read. The nightmares will leave. All of a sudden, the problems will disappear. Well, one day, I, I was told this good 15, 20 years ago, a long time ago. And I thought, hmm, I'm going to try it. Because we were holding Bible studies in our house, and my husband, who passed away, could see demons. I could smell them, and he could see them. And I was like, something smells like salt or something smells like pew. And he'd say, it's right there. There's two of them. They're sitting by that lady over there. It's, it's helpful to have somebody that can see. So I didn't know. I was learning. Well, and when they left, when we came, and Jesus said, get out of my house. I don't want you in my house. Well, he'd say, there they go. They're out the door. So I would know. However, I wanted to study about it and learn what is babies. I went up in my room and I said, Lord, I've always hounded my husband. Stop drinking, stop smoking, stop doing me, stop doing, stop sleeping around. What's wrong with you? And he would always say to me, I want the wife I married. She smoked with me, she drank with me, she partied with me. I said, I'm so sorry, honey. I will never be that girl again. I just can't. I have a new boss whose name is Jesus. He's like, get your religious stuff out of here. I said, I can't. I'm not going to force you. You can do your thing, I'm going to do my thing. But I'm going to still tell you every Sunday morning, go to church with me. One day, I was getting ready to say it to him, and the Holy Spirit shut my mouth where I couldn't even say it. So, whoa. I got in the car. What's wrong, Lord? What, what did I do wrong? <laughs> I'm inviting him to come to church. And he said, So I waited for him to leave. He was a truck driver. I only got to see him on the weekends, and so that was peaceful for him. And we got a couple bruises on the weekends. Okay. Now, I'm on my bed, ladies, and I open up the Bible. I heard, wait. Maybe I have a problem. Maybe it's not just him. Maybe I do. And if I have pride, I'm not going to make it to heaven because Satan was kicked out of heaven. So I, I need to make it to heaven. So let me open up my Bible. And I said, Lord, I see all these spirits. I know all these spirits in the demonic realm. If any of them are attached to my back, I want them off right now. And what was controlling me? The Jezebel spirit. Why? Because I had to make sure my husband was invited to go to church. I had to make sure he did this my way, my way, my way, my way, my way, my way, my way all the time. Where, where's the Holy Spirit supposed to sit in there? Come on. Monica, you can smell it a mile away. Men and women have it. There is no gender. The men like to blame the ladies because the Jezebel lady in the Bible. No, there's many, 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 many politicians and many company owners that are men that also have it. The point is this. It has its value because it's a very strong personality, but Satan uses that door to walk in and say, now I'm going to make it worse and you're going to live. You're going to do what I want. So there's nothing wrong with a strong personality as long as the Holy Spirit is using it. Just right. come on. Come on. So what did I do? I got in that bed and I said, Holy Spirit! I know you're the only one that can pour gas into me. Your power can get rid of every foul spirit. And I said, if I have this, if I have this, if I have the Jezebel spirit, I want it to go now so I don't ever have to worry if my husband is doing the right thing. Amen. And ladies, instantly, God was my witness. It was like a big, heavy weight just came off my back. Oh, I cried and cried. I was so free. I said, I don't care, Lord. Just get him to heaven. And even if he doesn't want to be married to me, let his next wife get him to heaven. I'm not going to worry about it. Who the sun sets free is free to be. I'm free That's right. That's right. So he came through the door, and he's looking at me like, oh, she going to say for me. And she says, I'm going to punch it. And I was quiet. Made him his dinner, took off, went. He said, what's wrong with you? I said, man, I have peace that passes all understanding. You don't know what I've been through. He goes, what, some religious thing again? I said, yeah. <laughs> it felt so good. And he couldn't figure out why. Why is she not bothering me? I went to church. Anyway, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. A couple years later, he decided to divorce me, which is all right. He found me love. She asked that. You go do your thing, but I will see you in heaven. Sign the papers. 
we stood in court as friends. And I said, he's got somebody else for good. I said, I'll see him again in heaven. His new wife got him radically saved. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? And before he died, he sent me this big apology letter. I said, please, 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 please don't apologize to me. Just you getting saved is all I want. Because your soul is more important than your paycheck. Your soul is more important than you sitting at my table. I love your company. But it was my job to serve you instead of worrying about how much you served me. You see, ladies, we need to reach our settlement. We go from suffering to settlement if we pass through the five levels of grace. The perfection is cleaning ourselves, repenting of ourselves before we can do others. You don't have to say, you don't have to repent, you don't have to talk to anybody, you don't have to brag, you don't have to do any of that. Keep it between you and the Holy Spirit. The Lord loves confidentiality between you and Him, your secret place. And then you step into establishment. Okay, you'll say, Lord, all right, this person gave me that. I was able to get this on and start building this thing. I'm going to be real careful who I talk to. And as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, then the enemy finds out. Then he goes, okay, now I have to strengthen you against them. And once you're strengthened against them, now I can have you step into your destiny and Joseph case as the vice president of the world and not worry about it. Even if your brother's standing in front of you, even if your father comes, even if every disaster comes against you, Joseph, you're strong enough now to handle it. Because you walk through every step. And no matter what, Joseph was so humble. He was good looking and handsome, had everything he wanted, and he still said, excuse me, let me ask my father. Just a minute, I'm not my boss. Or would he? David, would you please come up here with me for a quick second? This man, he's my cameraman, but he's also my dear friend for years. I just want to brag on him just for a minute. Please forgive me. One day, he was with his son, who's got his head down, probably sleeping right now. Um, I was with his son. How many years ago was that? Back in 2010. It's okay. He was fasting and praying a lot. And he was sitting at a corner, and he and I are big into the power. Let's get the, let's get the deliverances. Let's get the people set free so when they leave the building, they don't come back the same way. Amen. Amen. I want it to change. Yes. Every one of you ladies, I want you to change today. Amen. Amen. Let this service say, man, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do this. I'm going to. And from now on, you're stepping into yourself, stepping into your Amen. destiny. Every one of you had a destiny, and it surely isn't hell. Amen. Amen. Your destiny is your call of God in your life here in eternity. Just like the Bible says in Mark chapter 17 or whatever, Mark chapter 10, 29 through 30. David was in his car with his little son. And his little son is a witness to it. And, uh, he's so cute. He's the cutest little boy. Ooh. Anyway, and he said, there was a Spanish lady standing on the corner. Street light camera picked it up. Street light camera picked it up, and someday you'll see it on the internet if you haven't already. Street light corner picked it up, and here's a, 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 a woman standing there with her son who's in a wheelchair. He looked like he was paraplegic. And David has a very soft heart, and he said, Oh my God, somebody needs to pray for that boy. In Jesus' name, I command you to get out of that wheelchair right now. You need to leave that boy alone. Stop sign. Lift the windows down. Okay? This little boy witnessed it. Here's what happened. Now, you'll correct me if I did, if I, if I missed a few steps, but just summarize it. This little boy, his mom's looking this way. Oh, boy. Yeah. Ah! God is my witness. The mom turns around. you feed on ladies forget feeding on social media the movies the junk the phone the gossip you be powerful women of god you feed on this word you feed on the word of god five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night and watch your whole life change so elizabeth if it's all right with you 
I would like my friend David to help me pray for all those that need prayer, for depression, for sickness, for setback. Almost everyone in here has had a setback. I saw that. Where the devil's tried to stop you. You, you have three and all of a sudden you backed up to one. You take two steps forward and he, he knocks you back five. Enough! Some of you are looking for a roof over your head. God's going to change that today. Some of you have to live with someone else. No. We're powerful women. We have enough fuel and enough power. God's going to give us in Deuteronomy 8.18 the power to produce our own wealth where we can get our own place. Come on, ladies. We're powerful, mighty women of God. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you very much for coming. I bless him. I bless him, Lord. There's, the last time I was here, there's a few other men, and I said, Lord, whatever male is here, I'm going to bless them above all because I appreciate you being in the midst of all of us women. Amen. Everybody get a hand. We need more men. Amen. Heavenly Father, we can close our eyes. If, if there's any instrumental, just instrumental music, thank you, sweetheart. You're so good. And if you could please harmonize with me. I love her voice. i got to say something to her about her. One day I was up in Corona, and I'm hardly ever up here, and I'm passing through, and there's a friend that I stay at, the stays place over right there, and she, I went to New Hope Church, and somebody said, you, got, you would love New Hope, you got to go there. I said, well, if I have a Wednesday night open, I'll go over there. I'm saying, I hope I'm not a Jehovah Witness church or something. I don't know, I wasn't sure what it was. So I kind of crept in, and I sat in the back. And I don't, I stick out. You know, we can't help it, ladies, Hello. So I stick out for that. I don't want the attention to be on me. I want I want to watch them. Well, no one was behind me but this lady. I didn't know. Oh. Yeah. I gotta tell you what happened. It's so beautiful. So I'm sitting there and I heard worship and I thought, wow, there's a choir behind me. I thought you all were so big that you had a few people upstairs, and I thought your choir was in the back. So I kept turning around. She was sitting right here to me, and it was her. Her voice was so She just kept singing, and I, I'm sensitive to the spirit. I don't cry about it. When it comes to the Lord, forget about it. I'm going to follow me. So I kept thinking, oh, my God, if I came here just to hear this baby sing. And I turned around again, like, there's more people back there. This choir, and I, the Lord told me, that's my angels standing next to her. They were strengthening her and singing with her. And I said, Lord, someday I'd love to sing with her. She has such a beautiful voice. If you could permit me to sing with this baby someday. So if that could happen today, I would love it. She has such a gorgeous voice. I need you, Lord. Do you have anything that is just instrumental? Please, please, hallelujah, anything. Because when we don't have words, the Lord will speak to you. When we're speaking, it's hard to have two people speak at one time. Are you ladies new today? Are you refreshed today? Did you learn something? Are you going to go home different? I want you all to do your homework and read 1 Peter 5 10. Say, Lord, I want to go from suffering to settlement before I die. Help me get there. You can either go fast or slow. I need you, Lord. Hey, God, I so appreciate you, my friend. You are such a blessing to me. He blows the shofar horn. He comes to my meetings and watches my canvas. He's a mechanic, by the way, y'all. So if you ever need your car work done, He's honest, excuse me, honest, and very inexpensive. He can, he's in Orange County, however, he works better at his house, he's got a garage, he's got his house, but if he, he can be mobile at times, so if you're in a pinch, call him, you know, he, can, he can be mobile, but if you need to, you can, you can get a hold of myself, my, my information back there, and he's got his information back there too, we'll make sure y'all, you need to get a hold of me, because we talk every day. And that's his boy back there. <laughs> Nicholas. I just love Nicholas. He is such a young man. We're praying for Nicholas to grow up to be a strong, mighty man. Amen. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank the sound lady. Thank you, the sound lady. Thank you for having me here. Keep it going. I love it. Keep it. This is the point where I want miracles to happen. I want this lady to walk. I want 
those with depression to laugh. I want those with sickness to feel no pain. I want demons to leave this building that have been hiding out in their body and their mind for years. All expose their life and they'll be free today. No, the Holy Spirit will expose their life. And you'll be free just to borrow my company. Just like you borrow yours. Amen. And lady, you. David, stay right there. Will you, will you come forward, princess? Are you getting ready to leave? <laughs> I saw arthritis in your family. Okay. No more. In the name of Jesus. Who else needs healing? I want you to stand up here right now. This is a unity. This is a unity. And when I'm praying for someone, you pray in tongues. Who knows how to pray in tongues? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. She's playing the music. David, you and I are going to pray for everyone. Ladies, you don't, if you fall over, you fall over. Don't worry about it. If you don't, you don't. There is no show here. It's the Lord. Amen. So you can stand behind your friend. If they wipe out, that's all right. doesn't matter. But you. In Jesus' name. And by the way, when they go down, don't speak anything to them. Don't say, are you okay? Or don't talk to them. Because you're interrupting the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Just tongues. Just tongues. Yes. Arthritis. Pray against Mighty Lord. Wow. How would the Lord? See? In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Right here. 